through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 212. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're giving you our DVD rundown for the week of December 11th. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. I was pretty happy with this week. You know, we've got a lot of, a lot of current stuff from this yes. year, as well as an old throwback, but mm-hmm. stuff that seems to have done pretty well and be pretty as far as popular. Yeah, as far as money is concerned. And popularity. Yeah. People and money. People seem to like it. <laughs> you know, people seem to like it. <laughs> First up, one of the big hits. I don't know if you'd call it a surprise hit, but it was one of the bigger Maybe. hits of the summer. Mm-hmm. Ted. This is the comedy mm-hmm. about a man and his friend who is a teddy bear. Yep, stuffed teddy bear. Yeah. The this is Seth MacFarlane. Yep, right? Seth yeah. MacFarlane's live action debut. Mm-hmm. Essentially, just South Park, or sorry, uh, Family Guy the movie. Yes. I mean, yes. It's really what it is. Brian like, slash Stewie is pretty much Ted. Yeah. Voiced by Seth MacFarlane yeah. as well, with Mark Wahlberg as the lead. Yeah. You know, very popular film. Some people didn't like it. I know it got some backlash in terms mm-hmm. of being offensive, but I would but say I the mean, majority of people really liked from it. Seth MacFarlane right. I mean, exactly. Like, if you you know what you're getting into it, basically. It's like, oh my god, a Jackass movie was gross. Well, wow, amazing. You How should shocking. know this by now. Yeah, like, come on. You're, you're either in or out, pretty yeah. much, at this yeah. point. So, in terms of the release, it's a universal release, and okay. they seem to be fairly standard in terms of the releases lately they got the blu-ray dvd digital copy ultraviolet which i'm all on board mm-hmm. with they also have let's see pretty much the most generic type things you'd imagine for a film like this mm-hmm. deleted scenes alternate takes gag reel mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. stuff that i don't care about yeah but then you also have um let's see a feature commentary by seth MacFarlane, which okay. i think would be interesting as well as mark Wahlberg is on that too mm-hmm. uh you have the teddy bear scuffle that just is awesome right there. Like, do I need to say anymore? Like, <laughs> yes. That's just awesome. And then there is Ted, the making of, mm-hmm. which I think would be kind of interesting, just purely, you know... Seeing how they do it these days. Right, because yeah. it's, I mean, this is live action. Mm-hmm. So this is not just a cartoon that's been animated, yes. obviously. And just to sort of look at where we've come in terms of creating these creatures mm-hmm. that are put then into... Especially because I know it's, you know, I, I know Seth MacFarlane put on the, the green screen mocap suit so they could get his body movements with what he was saying. And so it's like, you know. Well, it's also you just think about something like Paul. And yeah. I didn't enjoy Paul that much. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's good to see the sort of... Evolution? Com- yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I don't know if... I mean, how much could it evolve? That was what, last year. <laughs> but, like, you know, it's just sort of interesting to sort of see that, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. evolution from <laughs> back in the day. Not, yeah, okay. not since Paul, this okay. story, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. Since Teddy Ruxpin. Oh, fucking love me some Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> I would totally buy that now. Maybe I'll go on eBay after this and get one. Also from Universal, though, yes. we have the Born Legacy. Mm-hmm. Similarly, you might recognize a Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, and ultraviolet. Crazy! It's almost like ultra, like Universal has decided they know how they're formatting movies. I, I'll give them credit, though, that they do it on all the formats. It's I mean, true. not everyone does that. In terms of special features, this one has quite a bit more than Ted, which is a good thing. You have a feature commentary with uh, Tony Gilroy. Uh, None of the actors, though, unfortunately, Mm. but you got co-writer Dan Gilroy, editor John Gilroy. Hmm. So maybe some of the people involved. (laughs) You know, the people involved rebooting it, because it is a reboot, so it might be more interesting to see. It's not, though. Well, well, it might as well be a reboot. It's it's a when you make a sequel with a different character, you there's a lot of Jason Bourne in it though. Like, no, they I know because it takes it lot. takes place what like it doesn't start like half or third of the way into the third movie. I think it takes like place that. simultaneous to the okay. third movie, and they talk about him a lot in it. And there's like, oh, well, Jason yeah, Bourne carved they, his name into this. Well, yeah, I mean they have to. You know, you can't make they don't have a, to. you can't make the Bourne it called the Bourne Legacy and not discuss. I Jason can do Bourne whatever I want at all the time. It's it's more about like the programming it was in than Jason yeah, Bourne. Tread fast or tread Treadstone. Treadstone. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you know you have the reborn featurette huh. as we were speaking of. Mm-hmm. You have uh, Enter Alex Cross. Yeah. Who was Jeremy Renner's yes. character? You Shirtless have Jeremy Renner. <laughs> you have the capturing chaos, the motorbike chase sequence, which hmm. was really the major action sequence in the movie at the end. Mm-hmm. Like if you've seen the movie, like it's not that much action for a Jason Bourne-ish type film. It's it's remarkably little. First one's pretty light, other than if you... Th- he if kicks you, some ass. If you, th- if you think of the first one, minus the mini car chase, the mini, 
you know, the actual car mini, not yeah. like miniaturized. Right, yeah, yeah, gotcha. Like, other than that, it, first born, I don't think it was pretty action light. And the problem maybe with the second and third one was the too fact that they were too reaction So, you know, give or take. Yeah, maybe. I, I prefer the action-y Jason Bourne, though. I, I, not, I think I the audience like probably did, too, because I don't think this movie did as well as it wanted to. No, but I think it also didn't help that you got Red Matt Damon. So, anyway, you, also, Damon. you, you also got, you know... Um, <laughs> A bunch of other ones about Aaron and Marta, sort of the, mm. the love story of the movie and stuff like that. It's It seems like a pretty decent addition. Uh, I don't know if I'd necessarily be drawn to buying either of these. I was mm. not invested that much into either yeah. of them that I'd want to buy it, per se. But, you know, if you like these films, mm-hmm. they're decent this additions. This week for you. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of stuff that probably gets more into my interests of stuff I enjoyed. Mm, um, first yes. up, Girls Season 1. Yes. This is the Judd Apatow produced Lena Dunham mm-hmm. series that was on HBO about a quartet of yes. female friends who 20-somethings get involved in some uh, raunchy adventures, mm-hmm, so to speak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I know some people did not like the series, but I thought it was pretty funny. Like, I was uh, really on the fence based on the, you know the internet decided to go ridiculous over this show and decide that it was either some amazing feminist statement or some horrible feminist regression. Right. So it was interesting for me to enter into it relatively uh, devoid of that and just kind of just I wasn't act- I was not actively watching it. I think I was listening to a couple episodes mm. and I found myself paying attention more than ignoring it. So, and then I sat down and watched it, and that's really quite entertaining. I think it's more accessible than, like, Lena Dunham's other film, Tiny Furniture. Like, I, f- yeah. I, f- I feel like... But it- that's, you know, film, drama, television, comedy. Right, but I'm just saying it's it's a little bit more digestible yes. to mainstream audiences, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, yeah, I, I came into it devoid of any of mm-hmm. that sort of famous inclinations, but, you know... I thought it was funny. No, like, yeah, that, that's the bottom line to me. It I is. thought it was funny. I, you know, whether you, whatever you think the politics of mm-hmm. it are, that's that's a, another discussion. Yeah, but and, you know, it's that whole argument you have of like single race move anything. Sure, where people are like, why don't there other races? Well, maybe there wasn't good actors for it. Maybe they didn't write the characters, right, and maybe right. people didn't. You know, who knows? Well, like, I mean, I feel like if you go down that rabbit hole, you can analyze exactly. anything to death. But and you she's know, she's already said that in the second season, she's gonna have ethnic characters. So. Well. <laughs> There you, there you go. go. Back at you. But in terms of like all the actresses, mm-hmm. I thought they were great. There's some great supporting actors as well, like Adam Driver. Mm-hmm. Um, Who's in Lincoln? Is he? Yeah, he has a small role in Lincoln. But in terms of the release itself, you know, there's not a heck of a lot. There's Which is sad because HBO is usually so good at that stuff. You would think there's a conversation with gr- the girls, mm-hmm. a conversation with Lena Dunham and Judd Apatow. That'll be interesting. And. Inside the episodes, and finally, five audio commentaries with cast and crew. Hmm. I mean, it's only like ten episodes long, yeah. so that's a decent percentage. I think they're half an hour episodes. No. Yeah, but it's still like, you know, that feels a little bit mm. light in terms of the special features. I would have yeah. liked a little bit more, but, you know... You know, if it's you only one special... season out, and the second season hasn't even started yet. Maybe they want to wait till there's a little bit more of a show. They, they knew that it was a hit, though. But, you know, I guess if you want special features, Tiny Furniture is on Criterion. It's true. Good luck with that. Yeah. Finally, one of the more interesting ones, at least for me, I'm mm. serving the minority on this, is the Criterion release of Following. For those of you who do not know what Following is, it is Christopher Nolan's first okay, feature I was gonna say, film. Is this the? It the, is the Christopher Nolan yes, feature film. The 60 minute, I believe. 50 uh, minutes. It's like that. pretty. It is. It is. It's like right short. around an hour. A little it's under. Not, a little it's, over. Yeah, it's not like a traditional like, yeah. feature film. Uh, story of a guy who gets caught up with the dame, mm-hmm. and you know. Very good film. Uh, he, he he's his whole interest is following yes people Pe- yeah he gets and, kind of ups- like obsessed slash just you know kind of starts off as like maybe a hobby just to follow right. a person for a while and see where well, they're it get, going it gets more and more sort of that's it's sort yeah. of like you know escalation yes. of things and hijinks ensue he get well he gets caught by one guy mm-hmm. and sort of what comes of that being caught yes. is kind of intense you know i know some people i mean this film has gotten some criticism like brandy was not a fan of it taking the slot of perhaps another indie film in the criterion mm. world or you know like does christopher nolan really need a criterion edition hmm. something like that and you know I, I can't necessarily say that's not a valid concern it's true there's a lot but of things always waiting also to be on some list. people just don't like the movie hmm and I can't necessarily fault that either. But for me, the thing that I like about it is you can sort of see the... You can under- definitely see Memento. 
Yeah, you can definitely see the momentum, <laughs> yeah. but you can also just sort of see like what was to come mm. from Christopher Nolan. Like you talk about those early vibes of directors or early stylistic decisions, you can really see that hmm. in following. Definitely, as you said, memento, yeah. very clear. Yeah. And that, that's one of the things that they play up in this release. A, you know, it's a, a digital transfer supervised by Christopher Nolan, which is Good. cool. Um, audio commentary by Christopher Nolan, which is Very uncommon. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I don't like. I was trying to remember, like, since Memento or something. I don't know if he's mm, done an audio yeah. commentary. Like, I think that was one of the big hoopla's with the Batman series. Is everyone was like, "Come on, come yeah, on!" Yeah, would have been interesting. Maybe he'll do that with the super decked out editions when they come out. <laughs> There's an interview with Nolan as well. Wow. Uh, in terms of things like Memento, though, they have a chronological edit. A wow, nice. So that's something they did on the release yeah. of Memento as well, which was really interesting because if you know that film, it yes. cut back and forth between past and present yes. a lot. I think it's interesting just because, like, and I don't know, I don't think this was just because it was an early work of a director that got famous. Because I, I saw Following right after Memento, pretty early. Oh, after I, I didn't. That. I don't even think I saw Memento. Following until either before or after the Dark Knight Rises. Really? Well, yeah. I was I was way way before I, the I Dark kinda, Knight. I kind of I kind of wanted to hold off. I was like, I don't know if I want to watch mm. it. I don't know if I want to watch it. But, like, but that's it. the thing. Is like I don't know how many. And you know, I, I it would be interesting in the first place to even know how many directors had done this where they they had a noteworthy shorter feature. You know, not a full mm-hmm. studio sure. feature. But I don't know how many that I can recall that. Are, I actually cared about or no, were good. Totally and so true. I mean, for me, it's the simple act of like this person made a film that was like a, like 50, I think it's fifty. I want to say yeah, fifty minutes, and that people care about it because usually shorts they get stuck either like no, under totally. thirty or like over hour twenty, and and if anything falls that falls in between, there isn't much out there. So I think it's interesting to have something that's fifty minutes. The pacing of it's different. You know, no, it's to- I totally agree with you. Uh, a couple other special features mm, to mention, though. Because it is Criterion. Yep. Uh, first up, they have a side-by-side comparison of the shooting script with three scenes from the film, which awesome. I think is interesting. I would like to sort of see what exactly transitioned yeah. from that original script to the film. And it also includes Doodlebug, a mm. three-minute film from 1997 by Nolan, starring following's Jeremy Theobald. Huh. So, so another that's probably little short he made with that guy? Even before following. Wow. This is like probably one of the first things he ever made. So wow. I'd be very curious to check yeah. that out. So needless to say, it, it's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. I, if you haven't checked out following, do. I'd love to hear yes. people's thoughts of it. I know some people just don't like it. Hmm. Like they don't find it to be an interesting film. They feel it's kind of cliched, predictable, blah, 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 blah. I enjoy it. I would it. love to have conversations I, with those people. I, I, th- I, thought it, I thought it was well done. I thought it was very interesting, mostly, just to sort of see where he was mm-hmm. going to go. And I love to hear the commentary of it, so yeah. looking forward to and that. It's just a really fun film, I think. Yeah. So that's our DVD rundown for this week. Mm-hmm. If there's something else you wanted to get or did get, let us know. Um, <clears throat> join us next time for our discussion of Peter Jackson in honor of The Hobbit. Part one. Part one, an unexpected journey, to mm-hmm. be specific. Yes. And as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, mm-hmm. phone number 323-761-9842. Uh, we're on iTunes. Yes, we are. Blip. There as well. Miro. Yes. Roku. Mm-hmm. Get that box. Get glue as Check well. in. Check, Check in. in. Get sticky, all that good stuff. Leave us reviews <laughs> I, I on got iTunes. In your head now. You you, have. You I'm, I'm on board. Get sticky train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> TM. We'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.